Hi, welcome to another video by myself, Rob Allen. Today we're going to demonstrate the wear and tear of stainless steel triggers with the stainless steel sear. That's what we've set up in the water and we're going to operate it the same machine as previously. Uh, this is a pneumatic, not a hydraulic machine. This cylinder drives the ram down into the mechanism and raises it. We preset the pressure once it gets to 120 kgs, that's shown on this dial in bars. We know how many bars is 120 kgs. Then it actuates a smaller cylinder that depresses. That cylinder doesn't stop depressing until it fires. The gauges in KPA, we've got two different gauges here. This whole machine has just been made from bits and bobs in the factory. And the main cylinder creates a pressure equal to 120 kgs, then the smaller cylinder actuates and that drives a piston out which triggers the mechanism. That change we can see in kilopascals, excuse the gauge being upside down, it works best in that position. Uh, 100 kilopascals is about 100, correction, 1.875 bars. If you remember the previous one, we were running at about 120 kilopascals for the majority of the time, and that was around 2.2 kgs on average. Um, we're now going to cycle the stainless and see how much changes it has over time. So now we're ready to start the cycle. Switch it on, Mike. Wow, immediately the pressures are going up started at about 100 kPa, now it's fluctuated back to 100. Yeah, there it's balancing out at about 100 kPa, which is about 1.8, 1.9 kgs. There it starts to go up. We're already at 120 kPa, which is about 2.5. Hundred and thirty KPA, hundred and forty KPA, hundred and fifty. The tension just keeps changing and now it's come back down again. What we believe is happening is the steel itself is fretting and some of the frets jam up and then break off. There we go, nearly two hundred KPA. There we go, at two hundred KPA. Needs quite a force to push it. And again over 200 kPa. Wow, 250 kPa. It's just getting worse, but every now and then it comes back down again. So this just shows you how inconsistent stainless steel is when rubbing against itself. Major fretting and uh, really poor friction coefficient. As you can see by the clock, this is very few cycles over a very short period of time. Really crazy. Two hundred and fifty KPA. That's about four and a half kgs of tension required. Now it's coming back down again. Well, and over again. Every shot is different. Not something you want to experience when you're trying to use your gun.
Okay, that's real time. Over a very short time, you've seen changes. We're going to continue running it, maybe an hour. You can see it on the clock, and let's see what happens. Well, there we know what's happening. It's jammed our machine. Well, there you have it. About five or six kgs of tension and it's not able to push far enough. I'm going to try and pressurize it with my finger. Not a place I want to put my finger. Here we go again. Way up. heading up greater than 5 kgs of tension required to pull. And there we have a stall again. I don't think there's much point in continuing. There you have it. The reasons why we don't fit stainless steel triggers is not because of cost, it's purely because of pressure differences when you need to pull that trigger. You want to have a constant feel that every time feels the same, you don't need these kind of inconsistencies. These will create um, lots of missed fish and lost fish. Not a good thing. So, here we have the parts. Once the machine was completed, here's the cassette they came out of. When I opened this up, there was quite a few small particles of stainless steel that came out with it. Now, these are the few particles that were left after the cycling. We did 219 cycles in total. You can count them if you want. You will have seen the whole cycle period. And the wear is visible. We will show stills of this. The corner is quite badly knocked off, as well as drag marks down the top of the trigger face. The meshing point on the sear has got quite bad scuff marks that we will see in the close-up. Yeah, you can see in the close-up when I disassembled the part, all the small particles. And here is a close-up of both trigger and sear showing the wear. As you recall, this is only after 219 hits in comparison to 17,000 with our conventional Kevlar filled acetal trigger. This is a very good reason why not to use stainless steel meshing parts. 